Friends, did Satan really offer Jesus the kingdom in Luke chapter 4? Did Satan have right to offer the kingdom? Did Satan own it? We're going to learn that and more in today's program here at Prosody News. I'm the host for today, evangelist Dan Goodwin. Many of you out there know me from my God's Final Jubilee ministry. I have a YouTube channel God's called God's Final Jubilee. Many of you follow me on Facebook, God's Final Jubilee Facebook. And uh, my website, godsfindjubilee.com, if you'd like to find me and uh, be follow my YouTube program. Uh, but uh, today we're here at Prosody News. They've asked me once again to come and share some things out of my new book, Seven Clocks of Ticking. And if you have missed the prior programs, friend, you've missed some important stuff, some exciting stuff. I want to tell you, you can, you can go back and, and watch any of the prior programs by going to prosodynews.com and just finding their, uh, their archives of the programs. Or for that matter, just uh, subscribe to their YouTube channel, Prosody News YouTube channel, and you'll get an alert every time a program comes on there. And all the TV programs are put right up on YouTube. So that's, that's exciting. And that means you can watch them anytime you want, whenever you want, and where you want. So, um, so the prior programs that I've done here are, are available on YouTube for you to go and, and back and look at. Uh, but we're going to talk about an important topic that's in the book uh, about, about property and about the Jubilee and about Satan. But I want to say this. It's all about a kingdom, a kingdom. Let me read for you, uh, first of all, a little bit about the Jubilee, but we're not, we're not going to talk too much about the Jubilee. Uh, many of you know me from my, my studies of the Jubilee and the books that I've written. And uh, I've got a book called The Mystery of the Jubilee that Prosody News offers here. And uh, I, I consider myself uh, uh, very knowledgeable about the Jubilee and the Seven Feasts and the Harvest. Uh, it's been a key part of my ministry. My whole ministry revolves around the Jubilee. In fact, my ministry is God's Final Jubilee. That's what we call it. That's our logo. And uh, so it's a very important thing. But did you know that Jubilee has something to do with property? Uh, yeah. Every 50 years, all the property in Israel goes back to the original owner. That, in a nutshell, that's what the Jubilee is. There's more to it than that. But uh, it's about property. And it's a reset every 50 years. On the 49th year, the trumpet of the Jubilee is sounded. On the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, uh, which is the Tishri uh, 10, 10th of Tishri, the trumpet would sound, and the following, the entire year, the 50th year, is a jubilee. And uh, during that jubilee year, uh, to make a long story short, without getting into all the details, property goes back to the original owner. What that means is if you sold your property, you get it back <laughs> free of charge. Um, so when you sold property in Israel, you're not really selling it in Bible days. You're leasing it because you're going to get it back. Uh, listen, if you, if, if you buy somebody's property and, and the Jubilee is next year, uh, how much are you going to pay for that property? You're not going to give very much because they're going to get it back in a year. They know that and you know that. It's not being deceptive. Everybody knows that. They understand that. Um, but there's a prophetic lesson here about the Jubilee that you need to realize. See, these things are not just... God didn't just institute these things for, for because he had nothing else to do. God instituted these things, the seven feasts and Passover and first fruits and, and, the, uh, and the sabbatical cycles. All these things have prophetic meanings for us. And they had prophetic meanings for Israel. Some of those prophetic meanings have already been fulfilled. Passover was prophetic. It was instituted in Exodus chapter 12. In fact, all seven of the feasts were instituted in, in, in Exodus chapter 12, that's in the Old Testament. And uh, some of those feasts are already fulfilled. They, they have come to fulfillment. Their, their prophetic lesson was fulfilled. Passover f was fulfilled. Christ fulfilled it. Uh, unleavened bread was fulfilled when, when he laid in the grave. First fruits was fulfilled when he rose from the grave. Uh, Pentecost was fulfilled when he empowered his church. There are three feasts left. And these, these are in the book, by the way, the, the seven feasts, the... the um, and so these three feasts that are left are fall feasts. It's Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and Tabernacles. Tabernacles, obviously, is the thousand-year millennial reign. It's, 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 remember, in Tabernacles, they all rested. They, for seven days, they rested. And they, they, they lived in tents, and they called them booths. And uh, that's symbolic or figurative, prophetic of the 1,000-year the Sabbath rest, the, the millennial kingdom. 
Um, the Day of Atonement, I believe, is symbolic or prophetic of Christ coming back to take back possession of the earth. He's going to have in his hand a, a, a title deed. If the seven seal book in heaven is the title deed, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, it's the title deed to the planet. Christ is coming back at the end of the tribulation after he's opened the seven seals, poured out uh, uh, the, uh, the seven trumpets sound and the seven vials of his wrath are poured out on the earth. Christ rede had redeems the planet, comes down on a white horse this time instead of a donkey, comes down in a white horse, rides through the Kidron Valley in through the eastern gate, takes back possession of planet earth, sets up the kingdom. Uh, ain't that going to be exciting? Are, are you looking forward to that, my friend? Uh, we're going to come with him. We're coming on horses with him. And uh, exciting days. And uh, so those last three feasts have not been for prophetically fulfilled yet. The first four have. Uh, but, there, but these things are prophetic. The Jubilee is prophetic. What is the Jubilee all about? For Israel, it's about the land, keeping the land in the possession of the 12 tribes. Uh, if you lost your land due to debt or you, 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 you were broke, you went bankrupt, you lost your property... In the Jubilee year, you got it back, free and clear. No, no, no debt owed on it. Every, everything was wiped off. <laughs> Some of you are saying, can we start that here in America? <laughs> Be handy, huh? But uh, by the way, great system. Great system. It affects, every, affects bankers. Hey, aren't you going to be a little bit more careful about lending money to uh, people who don't pay their debts? If you know the Jubilee's coming up and that guy is going to be debt-free and uh, that's it. I mean, you know, you know uh, if the Jubilee's five years away, you're not going to give that guy a 10-year mortgage, are you? <laughs> uh, see, it keeps everybody in check, keeps the bankers in check, keeps, keeps people in check. And, uh, and it's a reset button for somebody who went through rough times. He, he, it's a reset button. Uh, uh, one time in your life, by the way, every 50 years, one time in your life, it's going to mean something to you. But uh, so the Jubilee. So these things all have prophetic lessons. So what does the Jubilee have to do with all this? It has to do with property. That's what it has to do with all this. It has to do with the fact that the tribulation period is about Jesus Christ redeeming the planet. Now, that's not the only thing, but. Uh, that's one of the main purposes of tribulation. It's, it's the redemption of planet Earth so that Christ can come back with the saints and set up the millennial kingdom and rule from Jerusalem. Because right now, Christ does not own planet Earth. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Um, so, I want to share some things with you. Leviticus, let's start with Leviticus chapter 25, verse 13. In the year of this jubilee, ye shall return every man unto his possession. Um, this is how the Lord kept the land in the possession of the original 12 tribes of Israel as appointed under Joshua, in the book of Joshua. According to Leviticus 25, the Jubilee is begun at the end of the 49th year on the Day of Atonement, which is feast number 6. Leviticus 25, 9, Then shalt, shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound in, on the 10th day of the 7th month, that's Tishri 10, in the Day of Atonement. Shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land? The trump of the jubilee sounds on that tenth day on Yom Kippur, uh, the seventh month. It's a fall month, usually September, October on our calendar. Uh, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And on that day, on that 49th year, uh, it becomes the jubilee. And the trumpet is sounded, and the entire 50th year is a jubilee. Prophetically, the Day of Atonement is the day Christ returns to the earth on the white horse. That's what I believe. Revelation 19 11. If I've signed a book for you, or if I've signed, ever signed your Bible, you'll see Revelation 19.11 is the verse that I, that I put there. Um, uh, Revelation 19, uh, I saw heaven and, uh, opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him, this is Revelation 19, verses 11 to 16. Um, I, and I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called faithful and true, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. Or on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And uh, I won't read the rest of it there all the way down to verse 16. But uh, the last verse says, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Praise God for that. Since Christ is the original owner of the earth, doesn't the Bible say in Psalms, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, right? Since Christ is the original owner of the earth, I hope you see the significance of the Jubilee in light of prophecy. 
We understand what it meant to Israel in Bible days, but what does it mean prophetically? Because God didn't just institute it for the sake of... God had a purpose for it, a prophetic purpose of the Jubilee. And I believe that purpose is concerning the second coming of Christ and the coming back with the title deed in his hand, the seven seal book in heaven, which is the title deed to the earth. And uh, Christ fulfills or redeems every, every debt that's owed on the earth and the curse that's on it. He fulfills it all, all the way to the seventh seal, the seventh trumpet, the seven vial. And then he comes to the mountain. Uh, he he comes, gets on the white horse at the end of the seven years, rides down to the earth, puts down the battle of Armageddon just like that, takes that long comes to the mountain of olives, ride down through the eastern gate, sets up the thousand-year kingdom. It's all, but it's a jubilee. He comes back on a jubilee on the day of atonement. Isn't that something? Um, the land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, for ye are strangers and sojourners with me. Leviticus 25, 23. Let me say this. Christ will fulfill the day of atonement and the final jubilee at his second coming. See, I believe, and that's what my best-selling book was called, God's Final Jubilee. That's kind of out of print now. Uh, everything you need in that book is in the book called The Mystery of the Jubilee. It's available right here at Prosody News. But uh, Christ not only fulfills the Day of Atonement, feast number six, but he also fulfills the final jubilee on the same day because the jubilee is announced on the Day of Atonement. And, and it's the final 70th jubilee, the 70th jubilee from Moses. There's that number again. Isn't that something? The 70th Jubilee is Christ coming back at the end of all things and taking back what was originally His. Let's go a little further here. Um, these things are a prophetic picture of what Jesus has done for the sinner and what He is coming to do at His second coming. When we trust Christ for salvation, He sets us free from the penalty and the payment of sin that we owe. It's kind of like a personal Jubilee there. Now, let me say this. It's all about a kingdom. It's all about a kingdom. The Jubilee is prophetic of Christ coming back to reclaim, to reclaim possession of a kingdom. Now, let me, let me stop you right here because this is important. What, I'm gonna, what we're going to delve into right here is going to help you understand some things you've been puzzled about. This thing about a kingdom and this thing about the seven sealed book in heaven and the title deed and, and, and tie it all in with, the, with a jubilee and a jubilee year and Christ coming back to take back possession. It's all about a kingdom. Let me say this. It's always been about a kingdom. And Satan has always been about a kingdom. The fall of Satan. He, he said, I'll ascend into the heavens. I'll, I'll ascend my throne. I'm going I'm to be like the most high. In other words, I'm going to have my kingdom and God will have his kingdom. I'm going to be like God. And uh, it's always been about a kingdom. Satan tried to overthrow God's kingdom. He tried to take it from him. And we're going to read some scriptures here in a second. And we're going to show you some, some pretty powerful things. But since we took a pause here, let me go ahead and, and, and tell you how you can get the book. And what I'm, what I'm sharing with you is in the chapter called The Jubilee Ticking Clock. It's not just about the Jubilee. I get into this title deed and the seven seal book and, and I'm telling you, it's stuff that's going to change your understanding of, of what this is all about and it's going to change your understanding of the tribulation. And it's going to show you, my friend, why there is absolutely no way that you and I, as born again people, can be here for this. It isn't about us. It's about taking back a kingdom. It's about redeeming the planet and it's about restoring Israel. Uh, there's nothing in there about us. The saints are not mentioned after Revelation 4, um, except in heaven. And uh, so it, it, it isn't about us at that time. So with a, with a little pause, let me say this. Seven Clocks are Ticking is available now on the website, prostitutenews.com. Just go there. You can order the books, $21.95 plus shipping and handling. And uh, we have several cases here at the Ministry of Prostitute News. <laughs> excuse me uh, the books are here you won't have to wait they'll get them right out to you promptly uh, order more than one if you if you want but uh, we have some uh, or you can dial the, the 800 number on your screen and a wonderful lady will answer the phone and she'll she'll take your information she'll help you with that and get the book right out to you so with that said let's move on here <coughs> excuse me it's about a kingdom 
And it's always been about a kingdom. And I'm afraid a lot of God's people have missed this. We have missed this thing about the kingdom. Um, so the Jubilee is prophetic of Christ coming back to reclaim possession. Remember, the Jubilee is property going back to the original owner. In other words, the original owner reclaims what was, what was his before. So who, who was the original owner of the, of the earth? Christ. That's right. Um, so, God, so let me say this. God gave dominion of what was his, the earth, the kingdom. Remember, God created this thing. We're, we're, th he created the earth and the universe inside of time and space. That's a deep subject that's in, another, that's in the mystery of the Jubilee book. Uh, that's, that's a whole subject of its own. God created this thing inside of a 7,000-year span of time and space. And outside of, of this universe, there's no time. God dwells out there. It's another dimension. And uh, that, that's, that's in another chapter in another book. But uh, God owns the earth. The Bible says in Psalms that the earth is the Lord's in the fullness of. However, in Genesis, when God created Adam, what did God do? God gave dominion to Adam. What does that mean? That means he gave ownership. He gave authority over. Uh, he gave it. Let me, let me put it this way. God gave ownership. He gave the title deed to planet earth, signed it over, to Adam, just like a person who gives you a automobile or a house would sign over the title to that to that home to the new owner. Uh, God did that for Adam, that, and God said, "It's yours, Adam." Uh, that's why Adam was told, "You name all the animals." You know, that's a giraffe. You know, name. You know, he he named all the animals and uh, named crocodiles, crocodiles and. Uh, uh, lions bit were lions. And Adam did all that. He be, why? Because he had dominion. He had authority. It was his planet. It was his earth. It was his universe to to command. And uh, of course, uh, he saw that the, the, they all twos and twos and male and female. But there was no help meet for him. God brought a deep sleep upon him, and he and he made woman. And uh, uh, somebody said, "When was Adam born?" A little before Eve. <laughs> And so Eve comes along, and, uh, and there's, there's a, a marriage there, and now he has a help meet. And, uh, but God gave dominion to Adam, right? All right, so let, let's go on. Adam sinned. When Adam sinned, he forfeited. Don't miss this now. This is vital. Don't miss this. When Adam sinned, he forfeited the kingdom, the universe, the earth. He forfeited, he forfeited the title deed to somebody. Who? Not God. God gave it to him. Adam forfeited it to the one who tricked him, Satan. That's why Satan is called the God of this world, right? You've heard that before. It's in the Bible. The God of this world. Ye, ye are of your father, the devil. The God, he's the God of this world. Ephesians 6 talks about the prince and power of the air and that Satan's the, uh, Satan's the we've got to put on the whole armor of God. Because uh, the prince and the power of the air, he, he controls this world. It's his. It's his to control. Now, we're headed somewhere here. Don't miss this. When Adam sinned, he forfeited the dominion to Satan, who became the god of this world, small g, the god of this world, and has legal ownership of the world. Satan has legal ownership of the planet. He has the legal ownership of the of the cursed planet, the title deed to planet Earth. And I believe that's the, the, the title deed that you're going to see in Revelation 5, in the right hand of he that sitteth on the throne, is that book, sealed with seven seals, uh, that you can understand when you read the book of Ruth and Boaz, when he redeems the property of Naomi. Uh, they go in and they open, the, they open the, the, seven, the, the sealed book and they find out what's owed on Naomi's property. Same exact thing that you see in Revelation 5. It's the title deed. It's mortgage and it's sealed. And only a, a kinsman redeemer can open those seals and look therein and see what, what is owed on that property. And only a near kinsman can redeem that property. No stranger can walk in there and buy Naomi's property. Only Boaz, and actually a guy ahead of him, but the guy ahead of him backed out of it. So Boaz redeemed that property and took Ruth the Moabitess girl, to be his wife. And uh, these are all important details to understanding this whole picture about the kingdom. 
because the kingdom of Naomi's home was lost. It was mortgaged. Boaz comes along, redeems her kingdom, and marries her daughter-in-law, Ruth, and uh, reestablishes that little kingdom of, of her home there. Um, same thing in heaven. Jesus Christ is going to redeem the planet. He's going to reclaim what was originally his, the planet. And, he, and, and he's going to come back to the earth and rule for a thousand years. So that helps you understand a little better what's going on in heaven during the tribulation. What, what, what's the opening of those seals all about? Is it just for drama and excitement for you and I to, as we read? No, not, not at all. It's, it's, the, it's the happenings of a kinsman redeemer in, in the city hall as he opens the seal of the document to find out what's owed on the property so he can get his checkbook out and pay what's owed and redeem that property. That's what the opening of them seals are. These th events that take place during the tribulation with the opening of the seals is what's owed on the earth because of the curse and the fact that, that Adam forfeited the planet to Satan. This is what it takes to buy back and redeem. That's what redeem means, to buy back the planet from Satan, from the, from the grasp of Satan. And the Lord Jesus Christ does that. Let's read a little further here. Um, so uh, Satan became the, the god of this world when, because Adam forfeited it. When he said, By the way, weren't, they were kicked out of the garden, weren't they? Adam and Eve were kicked out, and, a, and an angel was placed there with a sword, uh, to keep them out of, out of uh, the Garden of Eden because they had lost the kingdom. And now they were out and they had to, they had to be sojourners of the world. And now he would plant the garden with, under, with the sweat of his brow and there'd be thorns and thistles. And, and Eve would have pain and childbearing and sin had entered the world. And things would never be the same again <laughs> for 6,000 years. Friend, we're getting close to the end of that 6,000 years, aren't we? We're, we're going to go back... When we come back with Jesus Christ at the end of the tribulation, we're coming back, I believe, to a place similar to what Adam and Eve had before the fall of man. Uh, pretty exciting thing, huh? Um, so, um, Luke, uh, this explains why he was able to offer the... Uh, uh, this ex uh, so, Satan's the god of this world. He has legal ownership of the planet. This explains why Satan was able to offer the kingdoms of the world to Jesus Christ. I had a preacher tell me one day, because I, I was telling this to a preacher one day, and I said, uh, I said uh, Satan, Satan offered the kingdoms of the world to, uh, uh, to Jesus. And, uh, and the preacher said, yeah, and they, the, the funny thing is they already belonged to Jesus. Uh, he was offering something that wasn't his. And, of course, uh, Satan, uh, I, I, told, I, I told the preacher, I said, no, you're wrong. Satan did have the title deed to the planet. He did offer something that was his. That wasn't a scam. He was, in fact, offering what he had power to offer. Let's look at the verse uh, in Luke chapter 4. And we've only got a few minutes left, so uh, I'll read quickly here. And the devil, taking him up. This is after Jesus fasted for 40 days. He's baptized with John. He goes up in the mountain. He fasts for 40 days. The Bible says he's in hunger. And Satan shows up like he always does when you're at your weakest moment. Satan shows up, offers you something, doesn't he? And... Uh, so uh, he, he tempted Christ, and this is just one of the instances that we're going to read here. The devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed him unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. In other words, those kingdoms were delivered to me, Satan. They were delivered to me because Adam forfeited and, and handed it to me. That's, that's the truth. Um, and by the way, you, you and I forfeit things to Satan too. Young ladies forfeit their purity to him many times in our country. And, uh, and we, por we forfeit our honesty sometimes when we lie and cheat. Satan uh, gets things from us. and we f w w He doesn't take them, we forfeit them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We freely f forfeit things to Satan. Isn't that sad? But not Jesus. Not Jesus. He says, oh, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. And he says, Jesus, I'll give these kingdoms to you, if thou wilt worship me, and shall all shall be thine. Bow down to me, worship me, and I'll give you all these. He was offering him a legitimate offer. He did own those kingdoms. He did have the right to offer them to Jesus, 
And Jesus knew better and declined and because he's getting them back uh, after the tribulation. He's coming back and he's going to redeem. You see, the earth was cursed in Genesis 3. When man sinned, it will redeem during the, it's going to be redeemed during the tribulation. This is what the seven sealed book in Revelation 5 is all about. It is Christ, our kinsman redeemer, coming, uh, redeeming the earth during the tribulation. And uh, these are concepts that are very vividly and very graphically explained in this book, in that Jubilee chapter that we're talking about right here. I'm reading right out of the book here, by the way. And Revelation 5, verses 1 through 7, we don't have a lot of time to read all this, but <clears throat> it does say, I saw in the right hand of he that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And a strong angel proclaimed with a loud voice, Who's worthy to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof? Can you see that happening in heaven? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, nor under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon, and I wept much. This is John speaking, I wept much. In heaven he begins to cry, because the angel cries out, Who's worthy to open the seven seals? Who's worthy to open the book and to loose the seven seals? And no man in heaven or on earth or under the earth was found worthy to open that book. John began to weep. Why is he weeping? Because John knows if that book don't get opened, we don't go back to the earth because the earth is cursed. We can't, we can't set up the kingdom. That means that uh, Satan wins. That means the Bible's not true. That means God's a liar. That's something to cry about. Suddenly, in the midst of the four and twelve, twenty elders, stood a lamb as he had been slain. He reaches over, grabs the book out of the right hand of he that sitteth on the throne. Jesus Christ takes the book out of the right hand of the Father sitting on the throne, turns around, Revelation 6, 1, he opens the first seal, begins the tribulation period. What's happening there? It's, it's Christ beginning the process of redeeming and buying back what was originally his. That's what the tribulation's all about. That's all in the brand new book. Seven clocks are ticking. That and so much more. I've had such a wonderful time sharing this with you folks here. And, and uh, I hope you'll go to the website, prossynews.com on your screen there, and look for the book. Uh, you're going to love the book. Twenty one ninety five. 25 full color pictures in the book. And uh, or call the 800 number and order the book there. Listen, it's been great being with you. I hope that you know the Lord. I hope you're ready to meet Jesus because I believe these clocks are ticking down. I believe the hour is late. I believe he's coming soon. If you don't know for sure, you're saved. Call the number on the screen. Ask the lady to, to put you through to somebody that can tell you how to know for sure that you're going to heaven. And until that time, I want to admonish you, my friends. Keep looking up.